What's going on guys? Vic BB back with another Game Page Arcades video. On this one today, we got a global VR Ultra Pin sent to me from a customer. It needs some serious help. Help. Alright guys, if you haven't been following me on Instagram, as you already know, I always say, be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. And also be sure to tune in on the live streams. I do live stream, I do live stream late at night. I do know that. I get a lot of people that message me like, Vic, I can't catch your live streams because you stream late. I know I get to do it on my free time, which is usually after midnight after the baby goes to sleep. But if you did catch a live stream about maybe three weeks ago, you would have seen information about this customer specifically on his Ultra Pit. Now behind me, just for video purposes, behind me I do have the 50 inch comic book store, Pandora's box, four player cabinet behind me, almost done. I also did a live stream on artwork on that. A couple of you viewers have helped me out as far as making the artwork on that. Customer is going through final details. He did request six buttons on each player, even though each player, really players three and four don't need six buttons, but he did want uniformity. So I just drilled out the six buttons for that. This cabinet is almost done and it feels amazing because that's a big cabinet. I can't wait for that. But on this one today, we're going to be focusing on the Ultra Pin from Global VR. So I'm going to give you a whole rundown. I'm going to talk about how the customer messaged me, how it got here, and my future plans on it. We'll take a closer look as far as right now. Think of this as a before I fixed it. And then later on, obviously, we'll shoot a whole promo video on after I fixed it. So this one's kind of cool. A customer messaged me and said, hey, Vic, I got a hold of a V pin. It's been in my basement for about a year and a half but I'm not playing it like I really wanted to and I got my hands on it. I thought I could build it myself and he just kind of gave up because he just couldn't get it to run. And basically he messaged me and he said, hey Vic, can you help a brother out? I said, most definitely. He also wanted to go into toys and LEDs and I have a lot of stuff that he sent me. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna give you the whole breakdown on this customer. So now what's unique about this build is that this has been passed. This cabinet has been passed maybe three or four different owners. He gave me a little bit of a rundown basically where he had an Ultimate Legends Arcade upright that he was selling on Marketplace and basically a, one of his, somebody messaged him and was like, hey, I'll take your Ultimate if you want to trade for my V-Pin. And he said it was a no-brainer because the Ultimate came from one of those uh, warehouses, kind of like an open box Walmart return warehouse. He didn't even open that Ultimate Legends cabinet and he just did an easy swap and he had this for about a year and a half apparently. So a year and a half, I don't know exactly what he did. He gave me a little bit of insight, but there's a lot to go over with this cabinet. So apparently before that whole swap, the previous owner of this cabinet gutted this cabinet. I was anticipating to see actual global VR hardware in this. No, the person before him gutted it. He basically just got a shell. Um, which honestly, fair enough, it is a pretty decent shell. It's actually very well constructed. If you do a search for Global VR Ultra Pin, you'll get a little detail on it. It basically was a machine that had 12 tables on it. It was for commercial use. It's got a coin door on it. Uh, and I believe it was actually running Hyper Pin. That just kind of shows you the age of this pinball machine. And it's still on its legs and it's in very good condition. Um, again, I'm going to go over all the stuff that I suggest to the customer and all that. But again, I was hoping that there was some global VR parts in this. But my customer told me, hey Vic, the guy gave it to me gutted. So he got a bare cabinet. I don't really remember what he said about this area here. Um, apparently the original cabinet did have a DMD speaker panel. So the original cabinet did have a DMD speaker panel here at the bottom. Um, and it was just a gaping hole. Again, there was a lot, a lot to it, but I'm just trying to summarize it. Um, so the customer that I have now, he went online, did a couple of things, he kind of pieced me over, which is very interesting. He went out and bought his own Dell Optiplex. So inside of this is running a Dell Optiplex with the 1050 Ti, so he is able to get 1080p, and eventually, hopefully, I'm able to put three screens on this. Um, he went and found a Dell Optiplex for cheap for about 200 bucks with a 500 gig SD. It was just the computer alone, that was it. Then he tried to add this Backbox TV screen here. Uh, then he went into downloading Pinball Emporium. 
which he thought was gonna be an easy download and simple plug and play like all these people advertise and nothing's ever plug and play. Nothing's ever plug and play. So he started out with Pimble Emporium. He apparently couldn't get it to run. He said it was a big headache that he did. It was just, he just wasn't for it. Then he went into and I even loaded it here. He did install Baller Installer. He has one VPX table, which is the Leprechaun King, which is, it comes with Baller Installer. I'm gonna play that. And again, I tested this last night and I basically determined that I have to do a complete wipe of this PC. It's, just, it's not even worth it. It's, it's gonna get wiped. So now I told the customer, he messaged me a couple weeks back. He goes, hey Vic, what can we do? What, what can we do to bring this thing to life? So I mentioned him, I said, listen, now the big thing is 4K. You're gonna need a 4K PC. I gave him a whole breakdown. I gave him piece by piece, get a new PC with 4K, maybe a 3060 graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM. I gave him everything, because he said to me, Vic, I want your pin. I want the Simpsons pin. I gave him everything. I gave him the price, and he goes, nope. I'm not paying that big. I don't, I'm not looking to break the bank on this. I'm already invested too much in this. I'm not looking to invest anymore. So when a customer hits you with that, it's, it's a little tough. I understand. So I said to him, listen, what do you want to do? He goes, what can we do with the existing parts that I have? I even have a bunch of TV screens and monitors and he just wanted this to play pinball. He just was like, Vic, even if you could just get FX3 to work on this, I'll be a happy camper. That then went into, oh, but can you also add like the ball roll and the surround sound feedback and the solenoids and that's where all the pricing added up. So we were still caught in the middle. About two weeks go by, I haven't heard from him. He hits me with this kind of advertisement he found on Facebook, on the Virtual Pinball Builders Facebook. Somebody advertised their entire guts for sale. What do I mean? I mean, I mean, I'm talking 10 solenoids. We got a 16 channel Saint Smart board. We got an LED Wiz on it. We got a KLZ board. We have four Dayton Audio surround sound feedback. He's even got four bass shakers. I mean, this is almost complete. The only thing that's missing out of this is honestly strobes, beacons, and uh, RGB flashers, but when he sent me that Facebook ad, I was like, dude, jump on it. And the Facebook ad was fair. I believe he paid about 400 bucks for everything. I mean, he's got literally, I would say about 85 to 90% of what he needs for me to build it. The only thing so far that I purchased out of pocket was I got the external USB sound card for the 7.1 surround sound and one or two video cables. Uh, I'll go into the third screen and all that. But Essentially, he's, he's, he's got almost everything because of that Facebook ad. So again, he said, I said to him, dude, if I were you, hop on that Facebook ad. If, if you're comfortable with that price, get it. I've personally never experienced these type of solenoids. Again, I'll go in depth. I'm, gonna, I'm anxious to kind of test these out. But he's got 10 solenoids, so essentially he's going to have a full force feedback cabinet. So again, the customer right now is supplying me everything. He's, I'm, when I say everything, you got the cabinet, you got the TV, you got the PC. I'm gonna show you guys, I'll flip the camera on. He even bought me three monitors. He was like, Vic, I had these lying around. Maybe you could put the third screen with one of these monitors, which I think I can. There was just a lot. Again, the customer supplied me with everything. The only thing I've swiped my credit card for so far was about, I don't know, 60 bucks because the USB sound card is like 40 bucks. That's like the only thing so far I swiped. He even bought me um, wires. I, I sent him links. I said, listen, I really just need wiring and the terminal blocks, and he bought it. So kind of cool. Again, instead of him going with my original price tag, he went out and basically said, Vic, send me the links. I'll buy it. You do it. And that is basically what's going to happen with this build. I did give him with my original price. I was like, hey, listen, let's do new artwork because I do see the artwork is peeling. He was like, Vic, I don't mind the artwork. The artwork's kind of cool because it has like multi-pin artwork on it. Yes, by the legs, it is kind of, and again, I'll bring you closer. It is kind of paint is chipping. The vinyl artwork is coming off, um, but he doesn't care about that. He's like, Vic, I don't care about that. I really care about being able to play.
So now it's also cool with that Facebook ad that he found. Whoever previously owned this, they knew what they were doing. They put um, the diodes on the solenoid. I even have like the power supplies, 12 volt, 24 volt, 5 volt, daisy chain. Maybe he watched my video, I don't know. But honestly, whoever he bought this from, it, it cut out a lot of work. Like honestly, just, just wiring diodes takes me like, you're, no joke, like maybe two hours. That's, that's how much time it saved, as far as so far what I see. Now again, I'm pretty excited for this build because I basically told him also one more thing because he saw mine. I did suggest to get beacons. He didn't buy beacons. I said, listen, they're 30 bucks. With the size of this cabinet, maybe just one red beacon would do. Um, so he's contemplating on putting in that 30 bucks. But I'm really excited for this. The main thing, honestly, is this does have a real coin door with service buttons. So I'm excited just to see how that is. Again, this is gonna be a unique one. But I'm also making this video to show you that yes, I do everything. You message me, don't be afraid to message me. It, it is me that you deal with. I don't have anybody else working for me. I am a one man show. You can message me, ask me a thousand questions. I'm there to help. And as you can see, you don't have to actually buy a cabinet from me, but I'm down to help build it. I'll wire it up and all that. You must keep in mind though, especially when it comes to VPN, because I do not want to frown upon or upset the VPN community. I'm gonna put my drive in this as far as testing and showing what it looks like. But when the customer gets this, there's absolutely no tables, no artwork, nothing. I will have pinup installed on this, but no media. I don't want the pinup world, the, the pinball world to think that I'm selling games and media. I don't do that. That's not what I do. Basically, what I'm getting commissioned for right now is to put in the toys and the surround sound feedback. and fix up the computer. And honestly, you know, just make it aesthetically pleasing. On that note, let me take you guys closer and we'll do a little bit of a kind of live view on it. I'm gonna load up a table before we actually open it up and see what we're dealing with. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to check out on this one. So off the bat again, customer purchased a Dell Optiplex on his own. He just bought a Dell Optiplex, put it in. It honestly is not put in well. I'm surprised that the power supply didn't rip out anything off the motherboard when it was sent. Um, so basically when I first booted this up, he does have Pinball FX3 on this. He just has an icon on it. I tried to run it. It doesn't launch. It brings up a Steam can't connect thing because this is not connected to the internet. So I messaged him, I said, do you own, like did you actually buy FX3? He goes, no Vic, that FX3 was included in Pinball Emporium, but I did something when I launched it and I overwrote something and now it doesn't work. And I was like, crap, how can I at least play with this and just to test it? So going deeper into his, and as you can see here, you might not see it clearly, but he does have the Pinball Emporium folder. I've never done it, Pinball Emporium. This just looks disgusting as hell. Again, I'm not making fun of anybody or the guys at Pinball Emporium, but this is not for me. I, no, this is a hard no. The big thing though is if I do go to a C drive, I do see the V Pinball folder. This is from Baller Installer. He's got Future Pinball, I see the install, I see Pinup System, and I see Visual Pinball. So we do have VPX on this. So I will launch VPX. And he gave me this little kind of mini keyboard, which is kind of convenient. On the main screen here, it's got Leprechaun King. So he's, he's got no tables besides Leprechaun King he basically was launching Leprechaun King and it just, it didn't work. I'm gonna launch this now and we're gonna experience some, some, some ugliness right now. So just get ready for this. So right now we do have a 32 inch Samsung that he put in, this guy put in the 32 inch Samsung which I believe is running 60 Hertz. I haven't dug that deep into it yet. This is also running a 26 inch Westinghouse TV for the back box. I'll show you again his little screens that he gave me. Possibly, just because it's conveniently shaped, I might be putting in a 26 inch full DM, no not 26, it's 24 inch, 24 inch full DMD that he supplied me. Again, he basically had stuff lying around in the house. He goes, Vic, go. Whatever you can make work, go. So right now we're gonna try to launch this Leprechaun King. Um, I'll go over the plunger details and all that because this does have a digital plunger. I was going in depth, but we'll talk about that when we actually open it up. 
So honestly, I'm not gonna get too much footage of actual gameplay because the game doesn't work. He must have did something to physics. If I press the start game button, the game starts, I don't know if you saw that, but the pinball right here launched, but then it went back to the left. And what I determined basically is that he must have played around with the physics. I'm gonna right now hold, I'm gonna actually nudge the table. There is the ball. We're now going to hold the plunger button. We're gonna launch the table. I'm gonna let the ball just drain. And as you can see here, the ball is not draining. It's definitely a physics thing. He must have did something. He must have tried to edit, like edit something, but now I'm stuck. I can't do anything. Left flipper works, right flipper works. He's got a plunger button down here and a start button. The actual analog plunger does not work. It, it's not talking to VPX. It, it doesn't work. Um, but that's basically it. He is dead in the sand right now. You can't, you can't do anything with this right now uh, unless I exit the table. Uh, so I will do that real quick. We'll just try to get some gameplay on it. Uh, what's pretty cool with this is that this does have actual glass. I have it there. And it had this kind of unique lockdown bar. And it's got a fire button on the lockdown bar. So this is pretty cool. This is straight from Global VR. Uh, it's kind of unique. It's got basically two hooks on the sides. Almost like how an arcade control panel hook would hold down. And there's your lockdown bar. Cool. So we're going to try this one more time. I'm actually going to try to at least get the flippers to go. Again, as you can see... He must have done something with the physics or VPX is confused. Apparently the plunger used the technology on it does actually also do nudge and tilt, but it's, it's, it's not registering. So now the ball moved. Cause I guess Leprechaun King was like, Hey, where's the ball? And you could see actually, yeah, it's definitely, you, you could just see it's going to the left. See again, I don't know who did that. Yeah, no, this uh, drain, at least on that, it had enough momentum. Ball saved and went down the pipe again. No ball saved on that one. Oh, it did, it did, it did. Oh, nope. <laughs> one more time. Yep, nope, now we're stuck. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. This is a uh, no. This is just a hard no right now. So for right now, for safety purposes and all that, just so I don't destroy anything, I'm going to shut down the computer, which is kind of an upsetting thing with the way this is set up right now. There is no power button, number one. It's just once you give power to the unit, it turns everything on, except for this TV here, which kind of sucks, but that's what the customer's gonna have to deal with. Um, but right now, off the bat, this right now is gonna get flashed. I'm gonna reset Windows back to its original state, meaning we're gonna wipe it, only because he already installed Baller Installer, so VPX, I don't know how, it's, I'm the type where I'm going to wipe it right now, so it's not even worth it. We're going to shut down the computer, and we're going to basically dismantle this right now. So, it's kind of cool, because it has this nice apron. You know, it's just plastic. This comes right off. And as you can see, we do have the Samsung TV. I'm going to put this to the side so we don't scratch anything. And it's be, again, this had original hardware in it. I'm going to give the power off. I'm going to turn the power off. So there's a flip of the switch in the back. And because I'm gonna start working on this today, we're just gonna get rid of the TV itself. So we're gonna take out the wires. And so long, 32 inch Samsung for now. We will see you later. Let me take you guys closer. We'll go in my hands, we'll go vlog style on this. And here we go. So first thing when I opened it up, he did mention, he goes, Vic, when you give power to it, there's a loud fan. That's this fan here. This is just a beefy fan. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just so much power in that fan. You do hear it. And as you can see, we do have the Dell Optiplex here with the 1050 Ti on it. This was the thing I was mentioning about the power supply. The power supply is not mounted. It was just kind of free moving. So during shipment, I'm very surprised this didn't fall and get the, I'm very surprised that it survived. But the very unique thing is just to see the front here. And again, we're going to start with the plunger here. So according to my research, this was known as a nanotech company named nanotech motion analog plunger. It's connected to this board here. This is a USB going to the PC and it does have its inputs here because we do have magnet saves, which he had mapped to nudge left and right flippers. Um, and again, the very unique thing is the coin door width 
the service buns. I'm very excited, mostly for that, because I've yet to do service buns. I know it's just four, you know, buttons, but it's definitely a cool thing. Obviously, it is a real coin door, so you could put real credits in. Um, it does have a plunger button. Again, it does have this plunger that doesn't work. And it's got the indented start button on this. Again, with the original Global VR, I'm assuming this was original definitely because this says exit game. So it's a very big button, which we're not gonna put exit game. I'm gonna work on maybe putting either the start button on this or the coin button on it. I'm not too sure exactly what I wanna do with this, but we are not doing exit game because you know how many times you could accidentally exit the game? That's gonna be brutal. So again, this is a 32 inch cabinet. I'm gonna do a, a measurement just to see the max TV you could put in this. Again, the TV that's currently in it, it it had a lot of space. It had a good like, I would say maybe an inch and a half vertically and a lot of space horizontally. So I'm gonna just do the research. I did mention to him, hey, maybe invest in a 4K TV. He said, no Vic, not right now. This is gonna be a 1080p build. So uh, this is my first ever 1080p and also my first ever 32 inch. My ultimate plan at the end of this, I am going to put this downstairs next to my Simpsons pin just to compare the size of it. But on the inside, again, it's built like a real arcade cabinet. So you have your battens that are stapled, not many screws. You can see how the legs are mounted. Very interesting. At least the original builder took their time to ground everything. It's got plunger housing ground, coin door ground. It's got this power strip, which most likely I will move. Um, this is just here, uh, as for safety reasons, but I believe the TV is being held up really just by on these edges. I might take this out. I'm not too sure. Let's take a look again in the inside of the cabinet. I'm guessing this ledge was already here. I'm not going to move that because it looks like it is being held by staples. There is no visible screws to take this out. So again, I'm going to work at least with this. I'm not going to try to dismantle the actual cabinet. I don't want to risk breaking it. I'm just going to work with what I got. Again, customer apparently put this Dell Optiplex in. Let's look at the back box real quick. This is kind of unique. Uh, he basically bought this cheap Harbor Freight mount and this just, this kind of scares me. Um, yeah. Uh, again, I don't know what happened here. It looks like somebody took a saw to it. I don't know, but this does tilt. I'm not going to do it because I'm nervous about the TV, but this does fold down as you can see it does have the arms this does fold down as a real back box which is cool but the only thing that upsets me is that if i look at the back original builder where there's no screws on this so this is stapled together from the back uh and i'm definitely gonna have to open this back up like this back is gonna come off he's got this fan here which isn't even connected this right here, this mech, there should be a latch here. There is no latch. Somebody broke it off. Again, original person must have broke it off, but there is a lot to go over on this. So original customer apparently does have the back door to this. He left the back door off because he figured, you know, the PC could breathe more, which is smart, not really needed. But as you can see, he did mount the Dell Optiplex here. There is a lot going on here. You could just see this wire nest here from the power supply being held up with the zip ties. Um, the Dell has the fan that was originally to the case. You need this connected or else the PC doesn't boot at all. This says iPack and that board in the front is not an iPack. So again, I'm not sure who did what. This has the whole 110 in and then it breaks out basically to the power strip. It's unique. It's definitely a unique size, especially like, I don't know. I, I mean, I'll measure it out, but it's definitely a different size than I'm very used to. So now just for purposes, we're going to kick this back on and we're going to go through the whole boot thing because of Dell Optiplexes. This is why I no longer do Dell Optiplexes. Oh, but I have my TV disconnected. I was going to basically show you that once this boots, it asks, it says, it gives you a bunch of alerts. Um, basically that there's no power button detected. There's no thermostat fan or thermostat dial. You get, you get errors off the bat with the Dell Optiplex. And, uh, basically it says that you have to press F1. Maybe I could do it with this TV. Unfortunately with this TV, I do have to press the power button, which is another reason why I want to open up the back door because I do plan to cover this. 
there's a lot of planning. So let's just see if the Dell Optiplex error is up. Uh, again, I, I haven't tried this part. I usually did it with the TV on. So now real quick, just looking at the Dell Optiplex, somebody did something here. The power pin, it's like jumped. That's not good. <laughs> again, we're gonna have to figure it out. I do get a fan error. There's a couple of things that uh, we do get as far as errors. I just gotta clean up and start working. It says that it's detecting a signal, no signal. So yeah, okay, we'll deal with that later. Again, I'm basically gonna do basics. We're gonna do the 10 solenoids. So I go three on the side, three here. I might utilize this metal plate for the slingshots. Again, I'm gonna first test out the actual solenoid just to hear how they sound and how they thump but I might be putting two slingshots on the actual metal piece underneath. Uh, we do have surround sound feedback on this, so I will be putting the four exciters. And he does have also bass shakers. He's got four bass pucks, so I'm not sure if he needs all four for this specific cabinet, but I might at least aim for two. Original cabinet designer did have this amp here. This amp was going to the two speakers for the back box. But again, the person on Facebook that he bought from, as you can see, you got Bass Shaker, we got the Dayton's. He did also give him two regular amplifiers and the Super Bass amplifier. As you can see, again, he did, this, everything's wired. Like, look at how the Sane Smart board is wired. The only downside to this board is that he did use, it looks like maybe 20 gauge wire. Whereas I like to use 18 gauge, so I might swap that out. Look, he's even got fuses on this. Again, a lot to it. Almost saving me time. I would say the biggest thing that saved me time though is the diodes here. This is the solenoid here. So we might as well take a look real quick. It is a Packard contact rating per pole, 24 volt coil. And as you can see, he's got here minus negative and positive so i'm going to basically put my wire from the same smart board to here daisy chain negatives and i just don't really know how this clicks like i don't know how it but as you can see the diode that's the big deal is that this already has diodes installed i'm definitely going to make sure the diode is going the right direction but yeah as you can see we do have quite quite a thing i'll show you real quick the three screens that he sent me just for the sizes, these are 4x3s or 5x4 resolutions. I could easily tell because they're old. But I'm aiming to use this. This is going to be a 16x9. The only thing is that this accepts DVI or VGA. The graphics card does have a DVI port, so that might work. And luckily, as you can see, the back of this does have an indent. That Acer has that dent, and I'm hoping that that dent will cover the Westing house. Again, I have to open up the back door here. I'm gonna have to break this out because I lose a good inch here. I need, I need every space I need at least for that third monitor. So there is a lot to it. At least you guys got a little bit of a sneak peek. I'm definitely gonna clean up all the wiring on this. Definitely gotta make sure that that, like even look like the, the, the SSD is just kind of wagging around. There's a lot to it. But yeah, there you guys have it. The beginning. Global VR Ultra Pin is going to get redone. Vic VP, Game Pace Arcade. I'll see you guys on the next one.